So what I'm aiming to achieve here in the first part is to get the geometry of this island, which is a lattice, and something that approximates to this infinite plane out of Bryce and into Octane via Das Studio. Now, I, I pretty much know how to use Bryce, but I'm not very familiar with Das Studio and I'm not really familiar with Octane. So that's my intended aim and I'm just going to crack on with that and we'll see where it takes us. Now I've had a few experiments with this already so I've got some ideas about how to go about it but you can't really view this as a tutorial because I don't understand enough about either Das Studio or Octane to know if this is the best approach but this is what I've come up with so far. Right, this scene comes from this product which depending on when you're watching this video either will be available or is already available at uh, das3d.com. It's made by Horror and myself and this particular scene is comprised of a few components. So I'll just uh, review what we've got here. There's a couple of filters in front of the camera which creates the, um, the faded effect in the sky and the sunburst effect. So I'm going to begin by getting rid of the filters. We may come back to those later or we may not, I don't know, because I don't know enough about Octane to know whether it's going to be able to recreate those effects within the render engine. But So I'm just concentrating on the basic geometry, which is this lattice and this infinite plane. And also there's question marks over how I'm going to get the materials out, but again, that's for later on. That's another problem to solve. The sky, oh, the sky, mercifully, is the easiest problem to solve in some respect. I don't know about haze or fog effect, but I can certainly get the sky dome out that Horro's created. So here's Horro's sky dome in the background there, and for it to be suitable for import into Octane, uh, I've found, I don't know if it's the only format it'll read, but I found if we change to HDR format and go from light probe to spherical, I can just save this and then I can bring that in. So that's one problem solved the simplest bit and you can see Bryce is quite efficient about that, that's already done. It's just the, the menus tend to hover around because of uh, recording this on Camtasia Studio. A little bit of a problem there. Okay, right. Uh, so with nothing selected I'm going to go to the Create menu and click on this icon here and that should launch me Das Studio. I'm on 4.5 at the moment. I'm aware there has been an upgrade. I've not had the courage to upgrade it yet. I'm a bit worried that something might break and my tests so far have been done in this version. So I'm going to Genesis is there, but I'm just going to get rid of Genesis. Right, back into Bryce, and we'll start pushing things across. So, this infinite water plane, I'm going to uh, modify this material and set it to the default grey. Um, um, Octane doesn't know about infinite planes, so I'm going to edit this and convert it to a 2D face and I'm going to just enlarge that 2D face so it's huge. Go to the, not the material, I've done the material to grey, that's an important step, otherwise when I send it over to Das Studio it'll start processing the material and it can take quite a long time and it's really better, I've found, that if I can deal with the material separately, so by rendering them in Bryce and rendering the channels, so long as it's going to respect some kind of UV mapping which is why I'm sending it over to Das Studio and then exporting it because it seems to help in that respect. So I'll go to the attributes and I'm going to set this object to the world origin. So it's just a great big flat square. Uh, something I don't know yet and something that may become significant later is that uh, the 2D faces out of Bryce when they get into Octane have only got one side. So there's like a good side that the normals work on and a bad side and that can uh, affect things like the equivalent of whatever shadow capture that Octane does. I've done a few tests and found that sometimes I've needed to flip 2D faces over. So I don't know whether this is right way up or wrong way up yet. As I said this is an experiment so we'll just have to, uh, you'll just have to bear with me if you're interested in this. So I need to shuffle this 2D face off to, uh, cam uh, not Oh, what am I sending it to? This is going to get confusing. Das Studio. So I've got it selected. If I click on this icon, it should send it. Maybe. I'm not sure. Uh, yes, it sent it. Brilliant. Right. And then I'll go File and Export and call that 2D 
underscore face. Right, and accept that. Now, it's sending the geometry over is fairly quick because, as I said, I set it to the default grey. Right, now I'll delete that shape and go back into Bryce and delete the 2D face. Okay, right, we've got this lattice. And I'm going to the Material Lab and I'll reset that to the default grey as well. If I send this over to Das Studio at this point by hitting the button, let's do that now, and go into Studio, that's gone over pretty quick, but uh, it's terribly crude. You can see it's all jaggedy and pixely, and that's not going to be good enough for what I want. So that's, that's that approach. I don't know how to modify the resolution that it accepts over the bridge, so I, I, I abandon that idea. But I do want the relative position between the infinite plane and, uh, well, big square in this case, and the island to remain the same. So I need it to go through DAS Studio at some point. But I also need something to know something about the material mapping. So if I go Control Z, I can bring the material back onto this surface, because remember I'd set it the default grey. And I'm going to export this using the exporter. So if I go File and Export Object and select um, from this list down here, wavefront object obj format, and then go save. I get the little dialog, and you can see it's going to send out diffuse color and bump, which might be useful information. I'll leave the default size fairly low resolution because I'm going to capture these materials. I hope I'm going to capture these materials in a better way later on. But uh, I just need to have a look at what the the maps are going to look like to get some kind of clue as to how to map the materials, or even if they're going to be any good. So. I'm just going to, I'm having two thoughts here. Do I want it in this position? Because it might be difficult to align it. And has Bryce just crashed that one? No, it's the menu still there. Sometimes it crashes, so just to be a bit careful. And the Camtasia running as well. So if I export it about 200,000, and then I'll bring it back in. So that's uh, about 200,000 polygons there. So it'll probably take a little while to export, and it's got to render its image maps. So that's doing that and it didn't crash which is a bonus so let's have a look what we've got here so we've got our 2d face and some kind of material information that uh, octane can read and we've got our lattice but we're not going to take this lattice straight into octane because it's um it's going to be out of position with respect to the 2d face which it should be possible to show you that now so i'm just going to launch octane this um this render requires on a specific graphic card uh, being present, but you can look that up yourself if you're interested. So, node, and I'll input the 2D face object. So, if I click on that, the preview uh, will will go and uh, start rendering it for me. In fact, I won't go get too deeply into what's going on here until a later video because it'll get a bit complicated because I'll work it out myself. I'm going to import my lattice object. Which, uh, just appeared there okay and to get those rendering together I need a new node which is objects geometry group and it's got like these two inputs and I sort of connect them together and click on that one and then uh, somewhere around here I've got my island right now that's the island as it's come from the Bryce export I'm going to now feed the same island through the DAS Studio one and we'll see whether it turns up in a different position. I can get the two together because I can just add another input and stick another lattice in that other input and we'll see whether they align up or whether there's some kind of difference once you've passed it over. Uh, something, a tip that uh, Len, Pumico Dot, gave me about the render preview here. I just double clicked and opened this preview configuration tab and there's the kernel that does the rendering and it just continues until it hits the max samples, which means it's really thrashing my graphics card. So if I just turn the max samples down to something like 100, uh, then when I, I preview these things, you'll, it'll go up to 100 on its number of samples, and then it'll just stop. So it won't it won't keep um, making my graphics card run, and for no very good reason, and then it'll get terribly hot, and it's a little bit of a worry that. So anyway, sorry, I'm digressing. Let's get back to where we were. So I'm going to now bring in the the mesh that I created a moment ago. So that's a file import object. So this is my exported mesh from Bryce. So 
that's all come in but it'll come in as a, a mesh object instead of as a lattice so we won't be going through the same conversion process when we send it to our studio so there it is it's sort of in the right alignment but it's appeared at the the world origin so i'm going to have to sort of try and roughly line it up by eye here just for speed the uh, bounding boxes on mesh objects are sometimes a little bit wonky when they come in for Bryce, but uh, we'll see if we can get a pretty good match. Okay, and I'll get rid of the original lattice. So we're now we're working with the uh, the imported mesh. As you can see that the material is not the highest resolution, but we'll try and sort materials out at another point. So if I select that now, I'll just check what material options we've got. Okay, so that should send over okay potentially because it's, it's not going to do any translation of the procedurals now because that was done in the first mesh export so I go to create and I'll hit the button here I think there's a way to do it from this file drop down and send to uh, send to DAS Studio as well so if I go to DAS Studio probably Bryce is still exporting I don't know come on DAS Studio where are you yeah it's just thinking about this it gets a little bit complex with all the different uh, things overlaid and one, t one on top of the other. So there's my uh, object. Now I'll go export and we'll call this Lattice Island I better give it a different name via DS save accept. Now this is a simple scene so just having two objects slightly out of alignment is not going to be a problem but I'm thinking in terms of start building more complex scenes you need some kind of common element in terms of orientation if you, and, and alignment otherwise uh, it's quite difficult to rearrange things in Octane I've discovered. So uh, here's the one via DAS Studio I'll just import that okay right and then I'll stick that on the geometry group and we'll see whether things line up or not now now look at that so that is the reason it's even got a little bit of material reading on it that's uh, I think that's a bit out, but never mind. At least it's showing it's capable of doing some sort of crude UV mapping from what we've supplied. That then is the issue. I, I want everything to come through DAS Studio so it's all got a relative orientation and, well, the orientation don't look bad, but certainly the scaling's well out. And then if they're going to bring figures in and at a later date or more complex elements, then everything's going to be where I intend it to be. So let's see. That then is more or less the point I intended to get to. We've got our object in. We're going to get rid of this one from that we've exported directly from Bryce so that we're going to work on this grouping. And then if I add any other elements, they can come via the uh, the the route from from Bryce through uh, DAS Studio and then it'll be in the correct orientation. I'll just cover that briefly because I can include another thing that might make sense to have. Right, for example, if I was wanting to simulate the same camera position, I could bring in an object that uh, showed that. So I'll create a cylinder in uh, in Bryce here, and uh, here's our camera. I'm just going to put it underneath there so that that's where the camera is viewing this scene from so supposing I wanted this exact camera position to be replicated in the scene in Octane I'll just shrink this cylinder down and then stretch it up so it's a little pillar because the center of this cylinder then is going to be where the camera is so I'll just place that roughly in there it's only a placeholder I don't need to be too critical about these things Right, so if I've placed that pillar where, where the and the origin of, of the circle there, where it's underneath the camera, and then I'll just check I've got something in DAS Studio, I'll just get rid of that, and then I'll go back to Bryce, uh, create, actually I'll just do it this way, like send to DAS Studio, so it'll send me that cylinder over, and if I go to DAS Studio now, there's the shape, and go File, Export, and call that... Um, camera position and save that accept go to octane now uh, go node import and I'll get my camera position object now so there we go oops I've got everything hold of everything not very familiar with this as I said right stick that in the group there and then I can 
sort of scan around and try and figure... Oops, I didn't manage to connect it. There we go. There, that little pillar there, is where my camera is positioned in Bryce, at the top of that pillar. Now there's some tools on here that allow me to uh, focus on and target. Now what was this? Target picking mode. I think that's the one. So if I target the top of that cylinder, I can zoom my camera into that position, and then then, I, then it'll be in the same place, place as it was in Bryce. And I just get rid of the pillar by disconnecting it and turn off that target mode. And there I am. And then um, when it comes to it, I can I can get to the options that I'll, put, I'll change the field of view. But I've not got that object in yet that allows me to do that. Um, that makes it easier to do that. In the preview configuration, you've got all these uh, camera settings and that. But I'm not going to get to that stage because otherwise things are getting a bit complicated. I've already gone on for a quarter of an hour. So essentially, that's as far as I wanted to get in this video. And uh, in the next one, the next part of this, I'll start trying to figure out how to uh, to to fit the elements together, to, to bring in the, the backdrop that I saved and sort the materials out and see if we get to that point. And now I've got a camera position at least. And after that, then it's going to be sort of seen whether or not we need these effects that I'd put in Bryce or how I'm going to create the effect of atmospheric haze which I have no idea how to do that yet so we'll see there's the end of the video I hope you found this interesting and uh, and I can't encourage you to use these techniques in your own renders because I don't even know where this is going yet or if even if it's going to work